Guys, just look at this beauty. Even if you don't care about fishing tackle, tell me this is not beautiful. Look, gray with silver flakes or whatever, pearl. Gray with silver flakes. Black, red and silver accents. Look at the spool. Black, red and silver accents. The whole thing, the size, the weight, is just absolutely the perfect combo it's like uh, this this combo was designed from the same manufacturer as a combo but actually it isn't this is what we're reviewing today guys the Fenwick HMX Fuji uh, real seat Fuji guides sloped guides with zirconium inserts. Zirconium inserts are expensive. This is a $70 rod, so that's a good feature uh, on a rod of this caliber. And look at what else is included for, for 70 bucks, guys. Five years warranty, okay? This is like a Saint Croix rod, so come on, that's a, that's a pretty good deal. Uh, if everything else is uh, fine with the rod. I actually went to buy a uh, different Fenwick rod. I went to Cabela's and I played with the uh, what was the $60 rod name? The Eagle and you know I was kind of on the edge it didn't have any expensive components it has the cheap stainless steel guides and the blank is kind of old and, and glassy I mean it was fine but 60 bucks this is an 8 year old model and it had no sale no nothing but anyway, while I was still uh, thinking about it, I went and checked all of the Fenwick rods and they have more expensive models than this that felt really stiff, like a typical bass rod. I tried all of them, but this one, I couldn't believe the moment I touched it. I just immediately fell in love with this rod. Okay, immediately. The action, just the feeling in my hand, Immediately loved it. I didn't care what was the was their sale. I, I just bought it uh, right away. And yeah, that's what we're gonna review today. Okay, starting from the butt section, the Fenwick logo is burned uh, all the way uh, in, on the bottom of the rod. Then we have this cool-looking uh, metal washer that is kind of the same color like uh, the blank rubberized cork and just for looks a piece of actual cork i mean this is easily the best looking butt section of all of my ultra light rods on top of that when you decide to cast with two hands it feels really good because it's kind of flared at the end it, it just feels really good for holding with two hands not that i cast with two hands very much but sometimes i do the real seat is Fuji, as we saw on the label. It does have exposed blank, which, you know, I enjoy looking at it and I enjoy, you know, feeling it from time to time. But, you know, I know they put it to increase sensitivity because you can feel the fish through the blank, yada, yada. I don't feel nothing. I mean, this doesn't do anything for me during jigging. To be honest, the way my hand is on top, it doesn't, my hand kind of stays, if you can see like this. I don't, I don't touch this part very much and definitely doesn't increase any sensitivity for me. But come on, looks cool, saves some weight. The cork, of course, you guessed it, it is made of premium cork, like any other rod on the market. Like I said, one day I'm going to make my own rod and I'm going to advertise that it's made with regular cork. And yeah, this is how you lock the real seat. Come on. Oh, I don't want to open it now because it's locked tight. But yeah, you just screw this thing here. So when you hold it, you don't touch any kind of threads, okay, on the real seat. So, I mean, looks amazing feels amazing um, I don't know the balance with this reel is is just like like you don't have a reel on the bottom like it's, it's just one piece you know the rod and the reel is just one piece it, it is that amazing 
Then we have a little hook keeper, of course. More logos. I mean, nice colors. I like when they have all of the colors kind of not necessarily match, but be in the same theme. So the, the theme of this uh, rod is silver of no gray with whatever silver or pearl flakes and reddish accents, which just matches this Shimano Stradic CI4 like, you know, peanut butter and jelly. The blank, I'm going to talk about the blank later, but yeah, you can kind of see the finish. And then we have the guides. Look at these guides. Don't they just look amazing? Don't they look like from some elite, not even 200, maybe $300 rod. Okay, so on paper it's just stainless steel and zirconium inserts. But look at the stainless steel. It is brushed metal or I don't know what they call it. It doesn't look chromey and shiny. It looks the same kind of color scheme as the rod. I mean, it looks absolutely amazing. And the zirconium inserts, incredibly hard, will never groove from braid and super light. So these are, um, of course, they're Fuji as well. So, you know, good brand, but so these are expensive guides and not just expensive, but a perfect match for this rod. And I have to tell you from now, the jigging performance of this rod owes everything to these guides. And all of the guides look like this, of course. But I want to show you, if I can, when you reach all the way to the top, the guides are still of a reasonable size, a reasonable diameter. The tip is still super wide. These guides are still super wide, but the diameter is good enough to support good casting distance. All right, guys, before I start talking about the rod, uh, let me just show you a couple of things, okay? First of all, this is the seven foot medium light and it's rated as fast action. So let's look at the action first before we talk about anything else. This is about, uh, this is one bottle of water which is about one pound. So I would say the categorization as fast action is correct. But when it comes to the power of the blank, uh, medium light is a little bit of an overstatement, okay? Let me compare it with my uh, Shakespeare Micro Series, which is also seven foot and it's rated light power, okay? Okay, so now I have eight ounces on both rods. I don't know from your perspective, but from my perspective, the curves on the two rods are exactly the same, okay? The only difference is the blank, the, the Shakespeare rod is two inches forward right now. And if you see the tip of the Shakespeare rod is also two inches lower than the tip of the other rod. Okay. So what this means is that the blanks are the same, but the Shakespeare rod starts to flex two inches deeper. Okay. Otherwise the curve and the power is the same. The recovery of the blank is simply outstanding, okay? Which is why I chose the medium light, by the way. Uh, the rod comes in softer versions, but those did not have uh, such a fast recovery and uh, such a sharp tip. And all the rods from this model share a, a similar characteristic of the first kind of 40% or first half of the rod in that it's uh, quite stiff, okay? All of the flex comes from the top half of the rod. And now, if the top half of the rod is wobbly and the recovery is not so fast, it's not so sharp, that's no longer a jigging rod, okay? I don't mind having a, you know, stiff uh, butt section of the rod on a jigging rod because that's how you get good tip control. But if it's going to be a flexi rod for fall fishing or whatever, I'm just going to use it to enjoy fighting the fish. 
then what good is it you know a, a soft tip a soft wobbly tip with a super stiff you know first half of the rod I, I don't like that so for that reason of all of the models that I tried this one I like uh, the best seven foot medium light like I told you the true power is light so it's not too stiff for fighting something like an 8 inch crappie um, and 10 inch crappie would, would, would flex it pretty good but it's still an excellent jigging rod okay as a matter of fact when it comes to jigging and how sharp and crisp the tip is and the amount of control you have over the tip to do those micro twitches you know like i say being able to write your name with like a one inch a letter when it comes to tip control this is the best that i have and also the best i have tried you know not counting bass rods because you know if you make a blank perfectly stiff like you know most uh, bass rods then yeah you get perfect tip control but you don't enjoy playing the fish anymore uh, now I'm going to compare with my other best jigging rods and some of them actually match it in, in the amount of control over the tip but none of them pass it, okay? Okay, so let me first compare it with the Cabela's Prodigy which is also medium light but unlike the, the Fenwick rod the, the true power of the Cabela's Prodigy is indeed medium light so the blank is a little bit stronger and when it comes to the smallest crappie I prefer using the, the Fenwick rod and also the Fenwick rod will cast smaller lures uh, than the Cabela's Prodigy just because the blank is a little bit softer but both of them have amazing guides you know stainless steel with zirconium inserts but both of them have this amazing finish uh, on the stainless steel that looks really sophisticated and expensive in my opinion but another advantage on the Fenwick rod is the diameter of the guides okay they are a little bit larger in the top section of the rods so the Fenwick you know casts a little bit easier you know this rod the Cabela's with this micro guides on top I mean they're ridiculously small I don't know who thought that it's okay to put to put such a small guides on a spinning rod where the line is coming out curly like this but I cannot get good casting distance with the Cabela's Prodigy rod and if you have any kind of you know difficult weather conditions you know rain or snow uh, these guides will be no good so the guides size is a little bit better on the Fenwick and the blank is a little bit softer and that's why I prefer it uh, over the Cabela's well also the Cabela's at least MSRP wise is $20 more expensive okay then I got these two major craft rods that a subscriber uh, sent me uh, thanks again Mr. Anurak and uh, these rods are indeed pretty good okay this one is measure craft go emotion ultralight six uh, six foot six now this rod is also matching the fenwick in terms of tip performance and it's probably even more amazing because this is a true ultralight this is not medium light it's not light i mean this blank is super flexy and it still has the control of the tip okay so amazing blank as well but these are expensive this is a discontinued model by the way I wanted to review this rod but when I started looking it up online it looks like it's already discontinued so what's the point of reviewing it uh, hopefully somebody watches this uh, section of this review uh, who is interested uh, by this rod but this rod is a little bit expensive right now online is I don't know on eBay is about 160 maybe you can find it 110 but it is still expensive rod you have to ship it from Japan okay and if, if something happens 
uh, to whatever guides maybe you can fix it but you snap the tip you have no recourse while the Fenwick rod I showed you comes with a five-year warranty so the Fenwick rod is not only cheaper but has better warranty uh, and in my opinion looks nicer these rods you know don't get me wrong I like black on black rods especially for carp fishing where no colors are allowed uh, and this is a good looking rod and looks amazing with this Daiwa Luvius which I'm going to be reviewing later in a couple of weeks but in, you know it's kind of you know it's not going to excite you okay it's fine there's nothing wrong there's nothing ugly with it but it's not going to excite you and the guides are actually not as good as on the Fenwick rod okay the guides are first of all they're kind of shiny and chrome looking and they're quite thick I don't know how the rod still feels so light and sharp with guides that are so thick but anyway uh, the Fenwick rod has actually an advantage when it comes to guides and appearance and price and warranty but not in performance if you can afford it or if you can find it this rod cheaper uh, major craft uh, go emotion it is actually an amazing blank okay the other major craft rod i still don't know how to pronounce it is it nano ace or nan days it's hard to tell if this is d or o uh, but this one is actually i think medium power <laughs> but ridiculous as it sounds the true power in this blank is light it's not even medium light it's all the way down to light so the true power of this blank is the same like the fenwick okay and a little bit more than a go motion but I can say the exact same things that I said about the Go Emotion. It is more expensive, you know, you don't, you're not going to have the five-year warranty. You're not going to ship it back to Japan if something happens with the rod. It doesn't look as nice. I mean, again, nothing ugly with the look. But it's just a totally black rod with black EVA foam, okay? It's not going to excite anybody. And the same guides, uh, the guides are kind of chromish and quite thick. I don't understand how these rods are really so sharp with guides that are this thick. But yeah, I will actually probably review this one because this one is not discontinued. It's still on Measurecraft's uh, website, even on the front page. So I would probably recommend both of these rods if they didn't cost over $100. If they cost like $50 or $60, I would probably even buy uh, one for myself. Especially the Go Emotion. I really like the Go Emotion. Amazing blank, but $110, not gonna go. But that's how it compares uh, to the top, the best jigging rods that I have tried, okay? These are the best that I have tried and the Fenwick matches them in performance but is better in appearance, it's better, it has better guides, it has better warranty, it has better price. So I would really recommend the Fenwick over this at the end of the day. And the last rod that I have that compares to the Fenwick rod is the Shimano Sensilite, okay? This one costs $60. So it's a little bit cheaper, but not much. But when it comes to performance, the only advantage that the Shimano Sensi Light has over the Fenwick is that this is a true ultralight. So you can still jig, but even if you catch a bluegill, it's gonna flex this blank in the middle is going to put a grin on your face, you're going to enjoy fighting a bluegill, okay? The Fenwick rod is light power, not ultra light. But anything else, the jigging performance does not compare, okay? I mean, I actually thought this was a pretty sharp rod until I tried the Fenwick and the two major craft rods because I bought this one first. But the jigging performance is not as good it, it is not as sharp the control is not as good the recovery is not as fast frankly the blank seems much glassier it has a lot a lot more glass 
compared to the other blanks. The other blanks seem like much more carbon. Uh, then the guides, you know, cheap aluminum oxide guides, rather thick also, uh, just like on the major craft rods. Appearance, come on, this could be a $25 no brand rod from Walmart. It's, it's not my favorite in terms of appearance. So, you know, for 60 or whatever dollars this is, uh, I would really recommend the Fenwick rod over this one as well. Okay, so in my final words, I have to say I absolutely love this rod. Okay, I recommend this rod for jigging for crappie and walleye and bass, but all the way down to crappie, you will enjoy fighting a crappie with this rod, despite saying that it's medium light. I recommend this rod at the full price of 79, I think, dollars, okay? And if you find it on any kind of sale, don't miss it, okay? Uh, I have absolutely nothing negative to say, not only negative, but I have absolutely nothing neutral to say about this rod. I love absolutely everything about this rod. The performance, the appearance, I mean just everything. If you have the money for a Stradic CA4 Plus, look at this. I mean, I'm telling you, the, the moment you grab it, it's like a one piece. It's like a one piece of something. Uh, they look amazing together. I know it's kind of pricey, but in my opinion, it's worth it. Uh, one last word, if you do get the Stradic, do me a favor, get exactly the 2500. Okay, nothing bigger, nothing smaller. These guys getting 1000 size reels, that's not necessary. This reel cost, uh, weighs 180 grams. Why do you need to save 10 grams on 180 grams? Then you get the smaller spool and your line becomes very curly and with, you know, with memory and small spools is, is just a no-no. You're gonna lose casting distance you're gonna get all kinds of problems to save 10 grams. So I don't recommend, all of my ultralight reels are exactly 2,500 size. This one says 3,000, but 3,000 and 2,500 is actually the same thing with different spool. So get the 2,500 and uh, guys, as always, thanks for watching my reviews. Uh, you know, it's, it's really flattering to me, every time I see somebody made a comment that shows that, you know, they watched the, uh, the the whole review, it's really flattering to me that, you know, these... Uh, I don't script my reviews and most of them are just one take. Only if something cannot be edited, then I do second take. Uh, it's really fl flattering to me to see how many people, you know, enjoy watching my reviews. So if you have... I really appreciate this, first of all. And... Uh, if you have any kind of questions, comments, uh, requests for additional information on any of these rods, drop me a question. I reply to all my questions. And uh, thanks again, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.